Grandpa had all the fires this summer just down the street from my house. There's Keith. He's grinding. He's just grinding. I don't know why he's grinding in July when we're having fires everywhere, but he is. One spark off a grinder hits the ground. We got fire trucks from three counties. Fire everywhere, trees on fire. I'd venture to say that hundreds of thousands of acres are burnt out west because of a cigarette butt. Just a little spark. Vast destruction of homes, forests, beauty. I mean, state parks that just look blackened because of just one little spark. This is the way James talks. One little word in a church. It breeds contempt and disunity and division and darkness. And it just begins to sweep through the church. And here's what happens. At the end of the deal, somewhere down the road, you say, what happened to that church? I don't know. You don't know. If it was such a big issue, doesn't somebody know what it is? It's the same thing. You see this in marriages. Uh, marriage falls apart. Why, are you, why is your marriage ending? Why are you getting divorced? divorce? Well, we just don't love each other anymore. Why not? We just grew apart. Well, at some point you loved each other. What happened? I don't know. I don't really even know. We're getting divorced and I don't even know why. It's because words started being exchanged back here and it just drove both parties apart and there was destruction. It happens in marriage and it happens in church. What we say is very crucial in the life of the church body. Listen to this. The tongue is a fire. He says it is a world, a world. That's a big concept, cosmos. It's a whole world of adiakos, unrighteousness. Lying within this tongue is the ability to affect the whole world for unrighteousness. Do you realize that in modern technology, even this day, that it's even what is preached today will be on YouTube before we get home and it'll be all over the world? It travels that fast. Communication just permeates the whole world. And the tongue that is used for unrighteousness affects it all the way across the board. The tongue has that kind of power. It is set, watch this, so you see my context is not out of whack. He says, the tongue is set among our members. That's where our tongues are, right here, among the membership of FBC Briar. That's where it's set. Now watch, staining the whole body. Power of the tongue. It's set right here amongst us, and it affects the entire body body setting on fire the best way to translate this greek word is i think how they did it or possibly uh, i don't know how else you can put it but the entire course of life there's nothing that is not affected by the tongue by the speech that we bring forth it is set on fire by hell it's like hell fuels the tongue to speak it is not a small thing it is not a trivial matter it is not something that is light Churches, again, are literally destroyed, closed, and sold because of the tongue. There are men who have left the ministry to never return because of the tongue. I know the self-righteous person says, well, if they were really called, they would have endured. You may can make that statement, but it's still the result of leaving the ministry was tied to the tongue of people who would just slay them. It is so damaging what the tongue can do. Just take that in and receive the truth of the Word of God and purpose in your heart to say, I don't want to be like this. I'm going to spend my life trying to use my tongue for the edification of the body, encouragement to the body, the building up of the body, bringing glory to my God, glory to the gospel. I want to speak that way. Give a church a whole body of people who are gathered together to say, man, I love my church. I love the Word. I love Christ. I love you. And speaking in a positive way to encourage the body. And certainly in any of that, it doesn't mean that we don't confront sin. It don't mean that there's no sense of discipline. But it certainly means we need to set our hearts to be encouraging to the body of Christ. Verse 7. He says, look, every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. We watched a movie called, what, did, what was it called? Hachi. It's about a true story. Is that right, Hachi? A true story about this dog, uh, Akita. Is that, is that right, Akita? And so this dog, he trains him to come and wait for him at the train station. So every day at five minutes to five, the dog's sitting out there. And so the guy gets off the train, the dog runs to him, and they just meet. You know, the dog's trained that way. 
The guy dies. The dog goes there five minutes before five for nine and a half years waiting for him to get off the train. You can train a dog to do that. That's pretty amazing. Nine and a half years of waiting on his master to come out that door who's never going to return out of that door again. It's, it's a Disney movie. You can watch it. It's a G-rated. It's good. So, but he says everything is trained. Beast, bird, reptile, sea creature, tamed and tamed by mankind. But it's this tongue. It's this human tongue. It's, it's restless evil, full of deadly poison. Wherever it strikes, it brings death. It kills, it destroys, it hurts. And watch the deceptiveness of this tongue. With this tongue, think about it. You've seen this. I hope you're not guilty of it. But we come into church and we bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, I love God. Bless the Lord. I love His Word. Oh, man, it's good. Yeah, the gospel. Bless God. And then at the same time, we walk out the door of the church and say, did you see that nod head and what he was wearing at church today? What an idiot. How in the world do we do that? How in the world do we come in and give the pretense that we're worshiping the living God and then spend the rest of our days cutting down our spouse and our children and people that we work with and just raking them across the coals with our tongue that we go to church on Sunday to bless God with? He says, brothers, brothers, it ought not to be so. This is, this is illogical behavior. You've been redeemed by the grace of God. You've been saved by the mercy of God. You've been adopted into the family of God. How is it that you can speak against these people this way? I was challenged with that very thing here at the Jefferson home. Fifty men out of prison gathered in a halfway house. Rough looking bunch. I think a lot of things to say. Perhaps I should say this. They're created in the image of God. They have a soul. I'm going to spend eternity somewhere. God, is there any way you could use me to make some kind of impact in these men's lives? I could say that. You need to really weigh through how we talk about each other in the church body, how we talk about people outside the church body, weigh through that in relation to our relationship with God. But to bless Him and to curse you, it ought not to be so. Be very cautious how we speak of these things. From the same mouth, blessing and cursing ought not to be. Verses 11 and 12, he shows you how illogical this is. A spring from the same opening, fresh and salt water, a fig tree and grapevines. Let me give you an illustration you can work with. There's a well. You got some nice little bricks around it. You've seen them some front yards. You got a nice little round foundation. You got these boards coming up. You got a nice pretty roof on it. You got some nice flowers around it. And you look, you say, man, that looks really nice. Wish I had one of those in my front yard. You know, maybe something looks really good on that. You know, you just drive by and say, that's really pretty. And it's got a it's post across it and a rope's wrapped up, and you let a bucket down, right? You drop the bucket down and you pull the water up. You know what you get? Whatever's in the well. That's what you get. Whatever's down there, there's nothing down there, you come back with an empty bucket. If it's salt water, you get salt water. If it's fresh water, you get fresh water. It's just the way it works. Jesus says, it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Why do you, why do I, talk negatively about other people, other churches, other things? Why? Because there's negativity in our heart. Okay? Why do we do this? because of something in our heart. We need to recognize that and do a little self-examination before we do some judging of a brother. The way judging is not wrong, you just need to get the plank out of your eye before you do it. Okay? Now, as we take all these things together, here's my concluding statement. Because all of this that I've said is tied to the human heart, we can't fix our heart on our own right? We need a Savior. We need the Spirit of God to help us. So if you're apart from Christ, the only way your speech is ever truly going to be changed is if you come to repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you give Him your life and say, Lord Jesus, control my speech, clean my heart, and make me new. Without Christ, you'll never get your speech right. And those of you who are saved, you, you know Christ, you've been baptized, and you're a follower of the Lord, a member of the church, maybe, or whatever. You're, you're committed to Christ. Lord, from this text, I know 
that my tongue is going to be an issue until I die. Lord, help me to speak better each day in a way that will please you. Lord, I'm going to do everything I know how, but I need your help because your text told me no man can tame the tongue, and so I need the God man to help me tame mine. So Lord, please help me to be a better speaker in relation to the humanity of which I live with. Let us pray. Father, thank you. We pray this day that you will be the you'll be the cowboy, you'll be the captain, you'll be the controlling one of our hearts and our tongues. But I pray for every lost man, boy, or girl in this room, God, that you will show them that what they need is a Savior, a new heart, a right spirit, that they may speak your glories. And God, I pray for myself and for this church body. Help us as a church body to speak in a way that will honor you, bring glory to your great name. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. Help our speech to betray us. <laughs> it would expose that we truly are committed unto you. We love you and we thank you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.